Hey everyone, my name is Mirai and welcome to the Iceboxer 42 Quick Setup Wizard video for Rift. There's a good bit to cover in order to get started and I'll be moving fairly quickly through this, but if at any time you find yourself stuck during the setup process, then I will suggest that you either reference the full detailed written guide linked in the video description or visit the Iceboxer forum for further support. So with that said, let's get started. First, check to see if the game has been added to Innerspace by right-clicking on the crosshairs icon next to the system clock. If your game is not listed at the top, then add the game, but if the game is already showing, then you can ignore this next step. This pop-up is where you'll name your game, point Innerspace at the executable file used to launch the game, and fill in any parameters you may need or want. And if you have no idea what a parameter is, then you can safely ignore it. Now, Rift requires the Glyph Client, and the easiest way to add that is by just dragging and dropping the Glyph Client executable from its folder or desktop shortcut onto this area. And that's it. Hit OK and move into Iceboxer. Once in Iceboxer, you can start the Quick Setup Wizard from the Wizards menu up top. On step one, pick the game that you're playing. On step two, add characters to your team by filling in the fields on the right. Iceboxer may have detected some existing characters on your computer or from your current profile. If it did, then you will find them in the large box on the left, and you can use them if you'd like. If it didn't, no big deal. Again, just fill in the necessary fields on the right. I also point out that you may need to select the Glyph Game and Game Profile before being able to add a character to your team, but after that, it should stay selected for all consecutive characters. On step three, go ahead and give your team a name. On step four, pick a layout for your game windows. The drop down at the top has a bunch of presets and there are some options along the right hand side for you to play with if you'd like. Normally, for beginners, I'd recommend just leaving those alone for now and going with the basic layout from the drop down, but I will suggest making one change. On the right, set the Leave a Hole option to True, and then pick a layout from the top drop down. In my opinion, a layout which utilizes this option will help new players when first starting off and will become more apparent why after we finally launched our team. On step five, set the foreground and background frame rates of your game clients and choose how you want to assign them to your CPU's cores or threads. Honestly, the defaults on this page are likely going to be just fine, but if you're afraid that your machine might not perform all that well when trying to run multiple game clients, then feel free to drop the background frame rate down just a little bit, but not too low, because a low background frame rate could easily cause unwanted effects. On step six is where you configure some of the core functionality for your team. And while most of this can be left as default, there are a few things to quickly mention. First, I'd recommend enabling the auto assist setting located here. This is a pretty useful setting to have enabled when just starting out, and it adds in an auto assist to all of your DPS keys that the wizard creates. Next, I'll ask that you double check that the follow and assist mode is set to the slot ID modifiers option, and it should be if you chose Rift on the first step of the wizard. Finally, make note of the hotkeys on this step because we'll be using these once we're in game, but I will remind you of what they are again when we're finally there. And this includes these assist and follow keys that are set here near the bottom, F11 and F12. After that, hit finish and you're done. Now first, I'd like to give a quick overview of Iceboxer, and then we'll need to configure a few things before finally jumping in game. So in Iceboxer, the general workflow is that you'll click on something in the upper left pane, which will normally populate the lower left pane with information, and if there's something to click on down there, clicking on it will then populate the lower right pane with additional information as well. There are a lot of settings in Iceboxer, and it can seem overwhelming, but you'll probably only use a fraction of them until you have a better understanding of the program itself, and that is entirely expected. Now the two main areas of Iceboxer that you should be familiar with from the start are key maps and character sets. In the key map section, you can click on any key map to see the list of mapped keys which it contains, and to the right of the mapped key itself is the hotkey which it uses. A hotkey is an Iceboxer key binding, if you will, and it's the key or button used to execute a mapped key. Always on, base hotkeys, combat broadcast hotkeys, and the custom hotkeys key map are where you'll normally be setting all of your hotkeys, and the other key maps can be left alone since they're mostly used for controlling things. For example, the hotkey used in order to get your characters to follow your main is, by default, Alt-F. You can change this to something different by simply clicking on the mapped key and adjusting the hotkey over in this area. However, I recommend leaving everything as default for now so that you can better follow along with the directions I'll be giving once we're in game, since if you change this to something else prior to that and I tell you to press Alt-F, then you might not remember what you changed this or any other hotkey to, which then leads to confusion. Now that's all I wanted to mention about key maps and mapped keys at the moment, so let's move on to character sets. 
Under the Character Set section is where your teams reside. When selecting a particular character set, you can see there is a list of slot numbers assigned to each of the characters you recently added. This is the order in which you will need to log your characters into the game, and deviating from this is something which can cause core functionality to break. ISBoxer doesn't know anything beyond what you tell it, and here is where you're telling it which characters belong to each slot. Character set slots launch in numerical order and are generally tied directly to the regions within your window layout. Now there's a lot more information about character sets, some of which I talk about in the next video, but I just wanted to briefly touch on this section to emphasize that it's important to log your characters into the game in a specific order. So with that said, there are now two things I'd like to configure before making our way in game. These only need to be configured when starting a fresh profile, so it's not something you'll need to repeat each time you create a new team, but I'd like to quickly set up some framework for both inviting our characters into a group, as well as interacting with NPCs. So, make your way back into the base hotkeys key map, and set a hotkey for interact with target. You can pick whichever key you'd like, and I'm going to be using F for this example, but just remember that this will be the key that you're physically pressing in order to interact with NPCs when using IS Boxer. After that, we can jump down to the variable keystroke section and set the entry for interact with target. I'm going to use the same key I did a moment ago, which means I'm going to be setting this to F. Now, that's all we need to do for setting up interact at the moment, but I'm also going to set a variable keystroke for invite team. Here, I'm going to choose shift alt i for no reason in particular other than it's the default hotkey that ISBoxer has used for quite some time and I'm just familiar with it. Okay, so finally, Every time you make a change in Iceboxer, you will need to export its settings over to Innerspace in order for them to take effect. And that is what we need to do right now before we can move forward. So, go to File, and choose to Export. If Iceboxer prompts you with recommending changes about frame rates, windowed modes, or anything like that, then I would suggest agreeing to them as it's just trying to enforce some compatibility settings. Now, after you've successfully exported, right-click in the Innerspace crosshairs icon in the notification area and launch your character set. When starting any game that requires a launcher, you will be greeted with one and only one launcher upon loading your character set. Here, you'll need to log into the account for the character set slot in which you're launching, then start the game and completely shut down the Glyph Client. A second launcher will then appear, check that the account name is correct, and if so, continue to launch the next character set slot in the same manner. Now the first time launching your team, you'll likely need to log out and then log back in using the correct account for each particular character. But because Iceboxer makes copies of a few configuration files, you will only need to do this the first time a particular character is launched. I'll also point out that you can slightly speed this up by going into the launcher settings and choosing to exit the launcher completely after starting the game. But you will need to select this option for each and every Glyph client the very first time a character or character set is launched. Other than that, repeat this process until your team is fully launched. Now, once you've logged in all of your characters and have reached the character selection screen, and assuming you've already created your characters, you're ready to then jump into the game world. But before that, I would suggest that you first double check that each of your characters are logged into the correct character set slot. You can do this by swapping to each game window and verifying that the character in that window matches the slot number of your character set. The button overlay which Iceboxer creates might be slightly blocking your view, but you should be able to get by for the moment. However, I do show how to adjust the position of ISBoxer's overlays in the next video. I'm sure you also notice that whenever you're focused on a particular slot of your character set, an empty space is left in its place, allowing you to easily identify which particular slot you're focused on. And this is why I suggested to enable the leave a hole option for your window layout during the wizard. Now, after you've verified that your characters are logged into the correct windows, I'd also suggest turning down your video settings on each of your characters at this time. Reason being is that many people play with their settings turned up while playing solo, but when multiboxing, multiple game clients put more stress on your hardware, and you will likely need to turn down some settings, including anti-aliasing, for smoother gameplay. Now, when you finally do get into the game world, ensure that the interface scale on all of your characters is set to the same value. If it isn't, then you'll have a difficult time clicking on elements in your UI at the same time when broadcasting the mouse cursor. You'll also want to ensure that all of your characters are currently on the same server when you enter the game world. You can verify this by right-clicking on each character's portrait, looking at whichever server they're currently assigned to, and then making an adjustment if necessary. If all of your characters are not assigned to the same server, then you may not be able to see each other in the game world. So, once you've verified all of that, standard practice for normal gameplay in MMORPGs is to ensure that key maps are enabled and that repeater is disabled. 
Now, having key maps enabled or disabled is simply referring to whether or not IS Boxer is turned on or off. You can more or less turn off IS Boxer and its assigned hotkeys by simply disabling key maps, and you'll normally do this when you want to use the keyboard without it intercepting your input. The overlay buttons in the upper left of the screen will not only reflect what state these two functions are currently in, but will allow you to click on them in order to toggle them on or off as well. In addition to that, there are hotkeys assigned to these two functions, Shift-Alt-M for key maps and Shift-Alt-R for repeater, also known as broadcasting. And I'll also point out that these hotkeys, like any other, can be adjusted to your liking. Now in Rift, we need to create some macros before we can begin multiboxing. We'll create an invite macro and an interact macro, as well as follow and assist macros, which means we need to write them out, assign them to an action bar button, and then those buttons will need some key bindings. However, we're going to work a little out of order here. So first, disable key maps so that they don't end up interfering with anything we're about to do. And second, turn on repeater so that we can set this up on all of our characters at the same time. Next, bring up the interface settings and navigate to the action bar section. Here, I'm going to enable one of the side action bars. However, because you may already be using the side action bars, you can use a different bar if you'd like, and which bar you use is up to you. Now, when changing settings in the UI like this, I generally double check that the rest of my characters have correctly followed along, which is a good habit to fall into when setting things up. Okay, so next we're going to set a few keybinds, which means we can exit out of here and bring up the key bindings menu. Once you do that, you can hover over an action bar to not only set keybinds on it, but also identify which bar it is. On the side action bar, I'm first going to assign the key binding used for the invite macro, which, if you remember, is Shift-Alt-I. That's what we set for invite team in the variable keystroke section of IS Boxer. So you can see that the button is now labeled with the key binding, but it looks a little weird, which is why it's useful to actually scroll down to the action bar in the key bindings menu itself. Here we can see it's assigned correctly, which means we can set the remainder of the keybinds. I'm assigning F for interact, which is already in use by the game, and in this case can be safely overwritten. And then both F11 and F12, which, if you remember, were the keys assigned to both follow and assist on the final step of the wizard. I'm separating them so that there's no confusion later for which macros go where, but as before, quickly double check that all of your characters are set up the exact same. If everything looks correct, then confirm those changes and move into the in-game macro creator. To start off, we'll create the simplest macro first, which is interact. When creating macros in Rift, it's required that you both choose an icon and have something written in the actions area below. A proper name is actually optional, but then again, it's really not if you want to easily identify your macros at a later time. So once you've got those in place, the only command you need to write for macroing interact is simply interact. No leading slash or anything like that, just the word interact. You can then save it and drag it over to the action bar button, which is assigned to the interact key binding. Next, we'll create the invite macro, and it's just as straightforward as creating the other one. Pick an icon, give it a name, and then type out the commands below, simply writing the word invite followed by a space, and then the character's name for all of your characters, one line at a time, is all you need to do. And once you're finished with that, save it, and then also drag it to the action bar button with the invite key binding. Finally, we'll create one follow and one assist macro for our lead character, which is the character who resides in slot one of our character set. Just follow the exact same process as before of picking icons, giving labels, and entering commands, but make note of the specific syntax that is used for these particular macro commands. We're adding in a modifier, which is surrounded by brackets, and this indicates that the shift modifier will be required before this command will work. This doesn't mean that you will need to physically press the shift modifier, but based upon our setup in Ice Boxer, Alt F, which is the hot key assigned to follow, gets remapped to a different combination of keys depending on the character. It's understandable if that sounds confusing, but I try to explain it a bit more in detail in the next video, as well as show how to properly expand upon the follow and assist system if you're interested. So after those are written, drag them over to the action bar buttons and drop them in place. The follow macro goes in the F11 spot, and the assist macro goes in the F12 spot. Now, just to recap, we've got an invite macro assigned to Shift-Alt-I, an interact macro assigned to F, 
a follow macro using the shift conditional assigned to F11, and an assist macro using the same shift conditional assigned to F12. If this is what you've got set up on all of your characters, then at this point you can exit out of all of this, disable repeater, enable key maps, and then test everything out. You can start off by pressing Shift-Alt-I to initiate a party invite. If it worked, then you'll see the pop-up in your other character's windows. Simply turn on repeater, line up the cursors being broadcast over the accept button on the other characters, accept the invites, and then finally disable repeater. After that, you'll want to test both follow and assist to make sure that they're working properly. You can test the follow function by putting some distance between the character you're playing from and the rest of your team, and then pressing Alt-F. If everything was set up properly, then your other character should follow the character in slot 1. Finally, you can test Assist by targeting something on your main character, pressing Alt-A, and then checking to see if the rest of your team picked up the same target. And if everything is working properly, then your entire team should all be targeting the same thing. If at this point you're having an issue with Invite, Follow, or Assist, then I'd suggest stopping here and seeking further assistance on either the Iceboxer forum or the live chat. Now, after you've got both follow and assist working properly, you can begin interacting with NPCs. The basic way of doing this is to pull up alongside the NPC, turn on repeater, and interact with them as you normally would by right-clicking on them and navigating through their dialog options with the mouse. However, there is an easier way to do this. Approach the NPC as before, but this time, target it with only your main character. Then, press the hotkey for interact with target, and if everything is properly set up, the rest of your team will target the same NPC and, if they're within range, interact with them as well. At this point, you would enable Repeater and navigate through their dialog options as normal. Now, I'd like to point out that the Iceboxer Wizard sets up 1 through equals on your keyboard's number row to broadcast to each of your game windows, and because we enabled the Auto Assist setting on the final step of the wizard, it does so with a built-in Auto Assist. What that means is rather than having to press my assist key every single time I target something, I can simply target it and begin casting my spell just as I normally would, and the rest of my team will pick up the same target and begin casting as well. You can expand upon what the wizard sets up by using the mapped key wizard found under the wizard's menu in IS Boxer, and if you're interested in that, I talk more about this in the next video. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but what's also in the next video is me showing how to expand upon the follow and assist macros we've already written so that you can lead and play from any of your characters. This not only helps when it comes time to do things like gathering quests, but if you eventually choose to enter into dungeons, then being able to lead from different party members can prove to be very useful. So, this is where I leave you. In closing, I will say that multiboxing may require a lot of setup and micromanagement at times, but in the end, I would argue that the reward is pretty satisfying. You've got the basic tools to begin multiboxing in Rift, but if you want more, then check out the next video which will give some additional information about both Iceboxer and Rift. And for any further questions, comments, or concerns, please visit the Iceboxer forum over at iceboxer.com. And with that said, thank you for watching. My name is Mirai, and I will see you in the next video.